every two seconds somewhere in the world, an Airbus A320 takes off or lands. For almost four decades, it has been more than just a plane. It's the engine of modern travel, the backbone of countless airlines, and the reason you can book a cheap weekend getaway. Its dominance is absolute. But in aviation, dominance is temporary. The landscape of efficiency, range, and technology is shifting faster than ever. So, what happens when the most produced airliner in history faces a future it wasn't built for? How it all began. To understand where this story is heading, you have to go back to 1988. That's when the A320 took its first flight. It entered a world dominated by older designs and quietly shifted the rules. This was the first commercial jet to fully adopt fly-by-wire controls. No more heavy cable systems. Pilots were now working through computers. A radical move at the time. The benefits were immediate. Airlines could save money, pilots could move between models with minimal training, maintenance crews had a simpler, more standardized aircraft to keep flying. Carriers noticed, quickly, low-cost operators like EasyJet, JetBlue and Indigo built their entire networks around the A320. Big names like Lufthansa and Air France relied on it to knit together their short-haul routes. By the late 1990s, thousands of A320s were flying daily across continents so common that most passengers didn't even notice them anymore. The aircraft spread fast and quietly became central to everyday air travel, not because of flashy marketing, but because it worked. And for a long time, nothing else came close. The cracks are showing. On the surface, the A320 Neo series looked like the perfect upgrade. New engines, better fuel burn, quieter cabins, Orders poured in by the thousands and that bought Airbus plenty of time. But under the skin, the A320 is still a 1980s airframe and that's becoming harder to ignore. Airlines today are demanding longer range, higher capacity and lower emissions. They want planes that can fly farther on less fuel, opening up thin transatlantic routes, bypassing hubs entirely. The A321 XLR pushed the platform to its edge. But that's exactly the issue. It's the edge. You can only stretch a design so far before it hits diminishing returns. Wing aerodynamics, landing gear geometry, fuselage width, these aren't easy to rewrite without starting over. And guess who's watching? Boeing, Embraer, Comac. Everyone senses that Airbus will soon need a clean sheet successor. The only question is, when will they make their move? A 321 XLR, the last stretch. Airbus's most ambitious stretch of the A320 family is the A321 XLR. It's essentially the same narrow body design, fitted with extra tanks and reinforced structures to fly up to 4,700 nautical miles. That's New York to Rome on a single aisle. For airlines, this is gold. It allows long, thin routes that wide bodies can't profitably serve. JetBlue is already using the A321-L-R for transatlantic flights, and the X-L-R promises even more range. But behind the success lies a compromise. The XLR's center fuel tank design has attracted regulatory scrutiny for fire safety. The landing gear geometry is pushed to its physical limits. The wing, still derived from the original 1980s structure, wasn't optimized for this kind of mission. It's brilliant engineering, but it's also proof that Airbus is squeezing every last drop out of the A320's DNA. Beyond this, there's no easy upgrade path left. The XLR is the swan song of the original design philosophy. A plane stretched to do something it was never meant to do. The competition is waking up. For years, Boeing was on the back foot. The 737 MAX crisis gave Airbus a near monopoly in the narrow body segment, but quietly, competitors are planning their comeback. Boeing's much-discussed new mid-size airplane may have been shelved, but the ideas behind it aren't dead. 
Boeing knows that if it launches a clean-sheet jet with advanced materials and new engines, Airbus will be forced to respond or risk losing the technological edge. Meanwhile, Embraer is steadily moving up the capacity ladder with its E-2 jets. They're lighter, quieter and more fuel-efficient for regional and thin routes, precisely where many A320s currently operate. And then there's COMAC. China's C919 may be years behind in certification and global support, but Beijing is pouring billions into catching up. If the C919 matures, it could undercut Airbus on price in massive domestic and regional markets. Airbus knows it can't rest on the A320 forever. Competitors are waiting for the moment its age shows. And when that moment comes, the fight for the next generation begins. A new world of demands. The aviation world of the 1980s, when the A320 was designed, no longer exists. Back then, fuel efficiency mattered, but jet fuel was cheap. Climate targets were distant. Passenger traffic flowed through hubs. Today, everything is different. Airlines are under immense pressure to decarbonize. Governments are imposing strict emissions targets. Airports are saturated and passengers prefer point-to-point -point flights. This is a world that rewards aircraft with ultra-efficient wings, composite structures, advanced propulsion systems, and the ability to seamlessly integrate sustainable aviation fuels or hydrogen. The A320 can't easily be adapted for that future. Its fuselage is too narrow for large hydrogen tanks. Its wing box wasn't designed for next-gen engines. Its systems were revolutionary in the 80s, but decades of incremental upgrades have pushed them to the edge of practicality. Sooner or later, incrementalism won't be enough. The successor question. So what comes after the A320? Airbus has quietly hinted at a future narrow-body program. Internally, it's sometimes called a 30X, a family of aircraft designed from the ground up with new materials, digital cockpits and potentially alternative fuels in mind. But launching a new airplane isn't like releasing a new iPhone. It's a 15 to 20 billion dollar commitment over a decade with massive risks if the timing is wrong. Launch too early and the technology may not be mature. Launch too late and competitors seize the market. For now, Airbus is walking a tightrope. The A320neo backlog gives them breathing room, but airlines are already planning their fleets for the 2030s, and they want answers sooner rather than later. The hydrogen gamble. One possible answer is hydrogen. Airbus has been vocal about its zero concepts. Futuristic aircraft powered by hydrogen, with entry into service targeted for 2035. If Airbus can leapfrog competitors with a hydrogen narrow body, it could redefine the market. But the challenges are enormous. Hydrogen tanks take up more space than kerosene. New airport infrastructure is required. Regulations need rewriting. It's a bold vision, but also a risky one. Betting the successor to the A320 on unproven technology is a massive gamble. And if hydrogen isn't ready in time, Airbus may need a conventional replacement to bridge the gap. But even that decision comes with its own set of challenges, because the reality facing airlines is far more complicated. The fleet reality. For airlines, the transition is equally complex. There are more than 11,000 A320 family aircraft flying today. Replacing them won't happen overnight. Even if Airbus announced a successor tomorrow, it would take years to develop and another decade to fully ramp up production. That means the A320 isn't disappearing anytime soon. Airlines will keep flying them well into the 2040s, but their role will change. They may increasingly handle secondary routes, while newer aircraft take over prime long-range missions. Their fuel efficiency gap will widen, especially in regions with strict emissions rules. And for some carriers, economics may eventually force early retirements, just like what happened with older 737 Classics and MD-80s when the A320 arrived on the scene. You might be thinking, so what? Airplanes get replaced all the time. True, but the A320 isn't just any airplane. It's the single most influential jet of the modern era. It democratized flying, reshaped route networks, and gave rise to the low-cost revolution. When its successor finally arrives, it won't just be another aircraft. It will define the next era of global mobility, just like the A320 did in 1988. 
The end of the A320 era isn't just a technical milestone, it's the closing of a chapter in how humanity moves. The Airbus A320 has reigned for nearly four decades, outlasting competitors, crises and revolutions in technology. But no aircraft lasts forever. As aviation pivots toward cleaner skies and smarter fleets, Airbus faces its most critical decision since the 1980s – when and how to replace the jet that changed everything. What do you think the A320 successor will look like? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this deep dive, be sure to like, subscribe and share your thoughts, because the story of aviation is far from over. And there are plenty more stories from the skies.